No matter how compelling the idea is that Marvel Studios churn out movies like some sort of unblemished, infallible factory of perfection, much like the story of my birth, it's actually pretty difficult to make a comic book movie. The sprawling graveyard of projects that never got off the ground or were unceremoniously cancelled partway through production should be proof enough of that, really. Because of the pressures of delivering a blockbuster, there have been some fairly high-profile feuds on the set of comic book movies. And it's not just those made by Marvel. There's very much a reason why some actors like Idris Elba, George Clooney and Josh Brolin have spoken publicly about hating working on certain productions, interestingly enough. And just as there are notorious tales from other movies of actors, directors and even producers clashing, the comic book movie world has had its fair share of production fights and feuds. It's just that these ones come with a lot more spandex and flying harnesses. Ooh, sexy. I am the Ginger Widow Ash from What Culture, and these are 10 behind the scenes fights and feuds on comic book movies. 10. Sophie Turner vs. The Disrespectful Co-Star X-Men Dark Phoenix The most recent feud that's come to light is courtesy of the, uh, let's say troubled production of X-Men Dark Phoenix, whose road to the big screen has been less than ideal. But putting aside the issues of delays and Disney buying the X-Men rights from under Fox as they prepared to release it, one of the film's stars reports that she had an even more specific issue on set. Though she stopped short of naming the actor in question, Sophie Turner spoke to Glamour about having difficulty standing up for herself and revealed that a male co-star on Dark Phoenix walked off set disrespectfully when it was her turn to say her lines. A writer had to stand in for him, which led to Jessica Chastain telling Turner to stand up for herself like the wonderful angel that she is. Hopefully, the nameless Nork learns his lesson when Turner goes full Phoenix all over his ass. 9. Richard Donner vs. The Producers – Superman 2 The story of Superman 2 is one of those notorious ones from the vaults of We Told You So cinema history. Ignoring the fact he was a huge reason for the first movie's success, Warner Brothers and mega-producers The Salkins fired Richard Donner from Superman 2 and replaced him with Richard Lester. Cue an inferior sequel and the eventual release of Donner's Cut, which proved that his vision was right all along. Donner's time making Superman 2 was far from ideal, though, and was defined by an unfortunately public clash between the director and his producer overlords. Apparently, Donner was angered by the decision to edit out Marlon Brando, who had demanded a huge cut of the box office take in return for appearing in the Superman movies and spoke in public about his need for full control if he was to go forward. As in most cases, his suggestion of studio interference didn't go down well, and Donner and the Salkins clashed repeatedly during production, as they had on the first movie, thanks to overspending, mostly before he was eventually fired outright. 8. Sean Connery vs. Stephen Norrington – The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen Clashing with your director is usually a good way of making sure your part is reduced, but when you're a star as big as Sean Connery, it's probably not that much of a concern. This is the guy who turned down Gandalf, after all, and it's unlikely he's lost too much sleep over anything he did in his incredibly successful career. Somewhat infamously, Connery's film career came crashing to a halt with The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which took a great concept and wrung out all of the joy and entertainment from it. Part of that might be to do with the feud that Connery had with director Stephen Norrington, who said he was too inexperienced. Ooh. The pair apparently butted heads over professional differences, personal differences, and anything else you can name, as Connery said. And they almost came to blows with Mr. Bond threatening to have the director fired. And then when it came to marketing the film, Connery decided not to toe the line and openly said, On the first day, I realized Norrington was insane. That must have gone down pretty well. 7. Jim Carrey vs. Tommy Lee Jones – Batman Forever Despite how much of a plum role Tommy Lee Jones was given in Batman Forever, he clearly didn't have the best time. And that had a lot to do with co-star Jim Carrey, who he just didn't find the right chemistry with. Which is a diplomatic way of saying he absolutely hated his mugging guts. As Carrey revealed on Norm Macdonald Live years later, there was a lot of tension. Carrey said that he was the star and that was a problem for Jones, and he was uncomfortable with the style of filming. The feud, which appears to have been particularly one-sided, came to a head in a restaurant during filming when he made the grave mistake of, uh, saying hello. 
Apparently, Kerry greeting Jones resulted in the blood draining from his face, sent his whole body shaking, and conjured up the response of, I hate you, I really don't like you, I cannot sanction your buffoonery, which I am 100% writing down and using later. But geez, Tommy, tell us what you really think. Clearly, he thought Kerry was an acquired taste. 6. Wesley Snipes vs. David S. Goya Blade Trinity Blade 2 was incredible, which only makes the mess that was its follow-up all the more difficult to take. Unfortunately, a good movie is often the product of a healthy production, and that doesn't seem to have been the case at all during Blade Trinity's filming. Having been the writer on the second movie, David S. Goya was promoted to director. Goya's attempts to change things up didn't go too well with star Wesley Snipes, though, who would go on to sue New Line Cinema for his character being sidelined as Goya pushed new characters played by Ryan Reynolds and Jessica Biel. Co-star Patton Oswalt later revealed a little more about the feud on set between Snipes and Goya whilst they were filming, revealing that the star was a less than complicit performer. He described him as crazy in a hilarious way, saying he wouldn't come out of his trailer and would just smoke weed all day. Apparently, when Snipes tried to get Goya to leave the film, Goya then threatened to use a stand-in since they already had all the Blake close-ups. Freaked out, Snipes stayed on set but then would only communicate in post-it notes like that passive-aggressive roommate you had in university who refused to share milk. Yeah, Karen, I remember. 5. Ed Norton vs. Marvel – The Incredible Hulk Ed Norton gets a lot of heat for The Incredible Hulk being one of the worst MCU movies, which is somewhat unfair if you listen to his side of the story. By that account, he faced an impossible task thanks to the studio over-promising and under-delivering. It's not the last time Marvel have been accused of a slightly overzealous approach to filmmaking, either. Norton revealed years later that the reason he didn't play the Hulk in The Avengers when it was greenlit haha, <laughs> get it, green? came down to the troubled production of his standalone, which failed to make any kind of money the studio needed or wanted it to. He has said he didn't regret taking the film on, but he has revealed why it wasn't a happy production for him. After the successful job he did recutting American History X, he was tasked with polishing Zack Penn's Hulk script and apparently clashed with the studio over what he wanted to do, earning him the reputation of being difficult. He's always said all he wanted was a better script, but once filming and editing started, the studio took out the new scenes he had added to the extent that his work on the final film was not substantial enough for him to be awarded even a writing credit. False promises, eh, Marvel? 4. Natalie Portman vs. Marvel – Thor The Dark World Whilst we've seen the likes of Red Skull, Pepper Potts, and General Ross all reappear in the MCU having been seemingly written out at one point, one name remains conspicuously absent from proceedings – that of Natalie Portman's Jane Foster. Despite the fact she was actually given something interesting to do in her last MCU appearance in Thor The Dark World where she became a vessel for the ether, she's not appeared since, thanks to a feud with the studio on that film's choice of director. Originally, Wonder Woman director Patty Jenkins was hired to make the Thor sequel, partly thanks to Portman's enthusiastic advocacy. Jenkins left the project over creative differences, and with Portman already losing her enthusiasm for the role and only excited to continue thanks to Jenkins, she only stayed on because she had to. 3. Val Kilmer vs Joel Schumacher – Batman Forever Batman Forever again, eh? This time it seems that Val Kilmer didn't exactly make a friend of director Joel Schumacher during filming, as Schumacher ended up calling him childish and impossible and has reflected further on Kilmer's mental state at the time. He said that Kilmer was irrational and ballistic, with the first assistant director, the cameraman, the costume people, and generally was being rude and inappropriate to everyone he came across. Schumacher was forced to tell him that it wouldn't be tolerated, stating that the two weeks where he didn't speak to him were absolute bliss. Kilmer himself reflected on his difficult reputation on Batman Forever in a Reddit AMA in 2017. His version of it is that he didn't do enough hand-holding and flattering and reassuring to the financiers. He only cared about the acting, and that didn't translate to caring about the film or all of the money. He was often unhappy trying to make pictures better. Those stories aren't very similar now, are they? 2. Joss Whedon vs Marvel – Avengers Age of Ultron Marvel Studios have upset a few directors in the past. Edgar Wright, Alan Taylor, and Patty Jenkins have all reason to complain, but Joss Whedon is perhaps the one who was most damaging to the studio itself when he revealed his difficulties. 
After making Avengers Age of Ultron, Whedon decided to step away from the franchise. Despite his being attached to the third Avengers movie initially, he very publicly revealed that the production had beaten him down after the studio placed heavy demands on him. Not content with allowing the director who made them $1.5 billion with the first Avengers to deliver his own vision, they demanded he put more easter eggs in against his wishes, made him cut one of his favourite scenes, and threatened him with cutting another, the Hawkeye farm scene, if he didn't comply. It's no real wonder that he walked away in the end, though it's a shame he was pushed towards DC and Justice League as a result. Ugh. 1. Josh Trank vs Fox and Miles Teller Fantastic Four for better or for worse, you will never see Josh Trank's true vision for Fantastic Four. In the end, the studio wrestled creative control from him because they didn't rate the direction his reboot was heading in and attempted to rescue it with a completely different version. The studio were apparently less than enthused about his final cut and opted to take over production and reshoot key sequences. Trank didn't take this well and took to Twitter to denounce their interference, which was not the ideal marketing launchpad for Fox, really. The feud wasn't limited to the post-Trank period either, though. According to Entertainment Weekly, Trank was difficult on set during the production, including clashing with the crew and almost fighting Miles Teller. On set, Trank was said to be horrible to everyone in the cast and crew. The studio hadn't wanted Miles Teller originally, but Trank forced their hand, which is strange since they ended up with Trank and Teller chest to chest after Teller was a sarcastic ass during filming, with each of them daring each other to throw the first punch. Of course, neither of them did. Nerds. And that's our list. What other movie fights belong on this list? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture. Make sure to subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this. And don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. Thanks for watching.